We'll uh, probably on a follow-up call, we'll have some discussions about the roles and responsibilities of members of the steering committee. Um, we really expect this to be a group of sort of actively engaged um, um, PAN collaborators um, and uh, we'll be participating in um, helping to shore up some of the sort of foundational um, components of, of how the CAN is administered and how the CAN is, is governed. Um, there's been some extensive talk in um, months, recent months and, uh, and longer about the establishment of an advisory board, and that's perhaps something we'll be able to take up at a future discussion. Um, and then we have a kind of loose constellation of what we call affiliates, um, who are kind of the membership of the CAN. Um, in this day and age, you know, it's kind of passe to have a membership society where people are paying annual dues that uh, that go to support the administrative arrangements of the, of the organization or of the network. Um, but we do have this, this, this group of several hundred um, uh, people who are, uh, have expressed interest or are variously involved and in one way or another contribute to the, to the ongoing activities of the town and perhaps have an opportunity for more fulsome discussion you know, about how we can um, mobilize and take advantage of the interest um, of these hundreds of people um, to a greater degree than we've thus far <clears throat> been able to, uh, to do. So this is the management team. Um, I think everybody from the management team is on the call um, today. Um, uh, as a management team, we uh, typically meet on a every two or three week basis in order to kind of keep the train moving. Um, um, the, those uh, interactions take place in much the same way that we're talking to each other today. Um, and in sort of pre-pandemic days, um, we would try to get together on a face-to-face -face basis um, once or twice a year, um, you know, resources and schedules um, uh, permitting. So, um, let me say just quickly a couple of words about how we understand the field of sustainable consumption, or as it's sometimes referred to, the field of sustainable consumption and production. So from a slightly academic perspective, we see sustainable consumption as sitting at this nexus of different disciplinary, interdisciplinary um, fields of focus, um, ecological economics, industrial ecology, innovation studies, environmental sociology, consumer and environmental psychology. That's not meant to be a complete description, but to sort of give you an idea just generally of sort of where we situate ourselves in a kind of intellectual or academic space. Um, there are members of the CAN who are actively engaged in work on social practices and behavioral economics. Um, there are folks who have a keen interest in degrowth uh, and secular stagnation, uh, material flows and circular economy, uh, decoupling, dematerialization, consumption-based greenhouse gas accounting, um, sustainable lifestyles and social innovation, and knowledge brokerage. Um, oh, as well as sustain sustainable system innovations. This you can see is a extraordinarily complex array of areas of interest and, uh, and expertise, um, a focus on socio-technical innovations um, is, um, is at the heart of, uh, of our understanding of sustainable consumption. And then sort of floating above it all is this uh, emergent emphasis on efficiency um, as a complement to um, Sort of the age-old emphasis on efficiency. Um, another um, sort of uh, supplementary typology um, sort of breaks the field down into a focus on agro-food systems, transportation and mobility, built environment, uh, energy, and a emergent focus on the role of finance and the financial industry in um, in underpinning um, consumerist um, lifestyles and perhaps um, creating opportunities for social change. Um, and then another cluster is over on the left side of this diagram, 
uh, comprising an emphasis on standards and accreditation, new business models, ethics, and marketing. So again, this isn't meant to be complete, but at least to kind of position um, where, how we um, sort of find our way in the world. Um, I would encourage those of you who haven't had a chance to do so yet to spend some time um, traveling around on the CAN website. Um, again, the CAN has been in operation for now five years. We were established in 2016. Um, and um, there is a wealth of, of, of material um, that charts the path that we've been traveling um, over that period of time that's available on the website. Um, what are we doing at the moment? We're um, actively involved in a negotiation and discussion with something called the Belmont Forum, and I'll say a couple of words about that um, in a second, um, in the development of what in the language of the Belmont Forum is called a collaborative research action. Um, this is essentially a what we're, we're involved in, in working with the Belmont Forum and assembling um, what prospectively will be a call for proposals um, that will be distributed to the international research community for a series of work programs on um, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, the Belmont Forum is a consortium of national scientific funding bodies. Um, you get a sense from this slide of who is represented um, in that consortium. Um, and it's an innovative organizational form for national science councils to pool their resources and to fund projects that would be without that would be outside of the scope of any individual national funding body, say the National Science Foundation or the Japanese Science and Technology um, Organization. Um, so it's not. As an international body, it's not always the most nimble um, and it's uh, responsive to complex uh, political impulses, um, but nonetheless, uh, it does provide an um, important source of, of financial support. Um, we've also had a series of projects that were launched in the early, early days of uh, the current pandemic on um, COVID-19 and sustainability transitions. Um, we're uh, actively involved in preparing and participating in um, Future Earth's um, um, annual conference um, that was due to be held last year in Brisbane. That was canceled um, and it's now being, um, will be held in June of this year, um, both um, um, in a, a physical sense in Brisbane as well as, um, as virtually. Um, the CAN has an ongoing um, um, collaborative relationship with the journal Sustainability Science Practice and Policy. Um, and uh, again, we'll hear more about the activities of the working groups um, 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 this morning or today. Um, and, um, and, and, and one of the primary thrusts of the working groups um, has been and continues to be you know, on the, the generation of, of publications, of, of publications for, for, for um, that appear in scientific journals. Um, you get a small sampling of what some of that work in uh, recent months has been, a uh, paper by the Political Economy Working Group, a couple of papers from the Circular Economy um, Working Group, as well as work on um, the relationship between the Paris Agreement and sustainable consumption and production. Um, and uh, you can see some of the uh, work on COVID. Uh, so you can see what some of the titles of, uh, of that, uh, uh, of those activities have been. Um, so I think that kind of in a very, very um, quick nutshell, um, hopefully provides at least some um, basic orientation on, on, on where you are. Um, and uh, we very, very much look forward to your collaboration and participation. Um, um, in the months and years to come. And with that, Charlotte, I think I will wrap things up and pass things over to you.